Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be a, a bit of a flashback to a previous live stream. So I did a live stream last night actually, and we ended up talking about a subject which kind of irked me a little bit. And I thought rather than make a whole new video on it, I would just clip out the section from the live stream and show you the relevant points. And it's done more as a conversation starter. So please remember this was a live stream, so not quite as polished and professional as you usually expect from me. So there was some fumbling of words and rambling and tangents. We do live streams every Friday around about nine o'clock UK if you want to join us. Um, but I thought it was worth talking about, so I'm doing this just to start the conversation. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you've got any feelings on the subject. I did kind of mangle some of the details and stumble across some of the stats. But it, the, the general premise was there, uh, and it was a really worrying thing for the hobby, or I can see it can have worrying ramifications. But have a look, let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one. And remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Here you go. Um, I keep seeing people talking about Good Morning Britain. It's not a program I watch very often. So I had to do a little bit of research and find out. Well, I want you to stop scrolling. Sorry. I did a little bit of research to see what the hell people were going on about. So it seems that sometime in the last couple of weeks, the Aspinall Foundation, which is founded by a guy, it's Damien Aspinall, who's the son of someone who basically at a zoo and made a load of money off his curiosities and his son's gone completely the other way and it's a charity about basically getting rid of zoos so his latest big thing was about elephants and he's sent some elephants or he wants to send some elephants back to Africa um, I mean it's the kind of thing when you read a little bit about it you go on the face of it oh yeah animal conservation that sounds great that sounds like the kind of thing I'd be right into but it's full of him saying, no, people shouldn't have animals. Animals should belong in the wild. Um, all the, every article, though, has got him like stroking a cheetah. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, so no other bugger except you can have animals to play with. Um, but yeah, I get it. It's his version of conservation. I think the worrying thing or the thing that's getting some people a little bit worried is they've hired um, Boris Johnson's missus in some capacity. And she made some statements about not liking the way fish were transported. So, right, okay. Didn't, has no background in animal welfare or animals at all. Has no, edu no qualifications. Didn't consult any of the groups or authorities or trade bodies or anything like that to see, is this a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is there a problem here? Just released a paper saying, no, this is bad. We shouldn't be doing it like this. So your man Aspinall has come out and said we shouldn't have aquariums. You know, a bit like, oh, right. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with some of the comments at the same time. So he's come out and said you shouldn't have aquariums uh, and wants all fish to be released into the wild, back to the wild. So Peter has picked up on this and on Good Morning Britain, which if you're not from the UK is like a morning breakfast show on ITV had a rep from Peter and a guy from, uh, I'm going to murder this now, I think it was from Bristol, in one of the big public aquariums, can't remember his name, I'm terribly sorry, if you ever see this, I apologise, um, but did the usual, let's get two people with opposing opinions and make them fight it out on air, yeah, go for it, but they didn't really do that, but this, the lady from Peter, just came across like a complete tool, made some nonsensical arguments, about, yeah, well, um, what was some of the things? It was like, well, it's fish. Fish are being ripped from their families. Oh, really? Fish are being ripped from their families and, and held in these glass prisons. And how would you like it if you were ripped from your family and put in a glass prison? And you're a bit like, well, it's not the same thing. Please stop anthropomor anthropomorphizing this. <laughs> Quite often, <laughs> it's like, oh, the their children being ripped from their fishy parents. Well, no, a lot of fish will eat their young if they get the chance. So it's not like they're the best parents in the world and they're sat there sobbing when their kids get taken away to get put in an aquarium. But it was just stat after stat after stat of nonsense, complete nonsense. 99% of all aquarium fish are taken from the wild. No, they're not. 79% of all aquarium fish, that, that's bollocks. None of that's true. Um, 
And then the guy from the Bristol Aquarium, have, that might not be the Bristol Aquarium, I might have made that up. He made some very good reasoned points, and I might be slightly biased, what with me being an aquarium channel myself. But <laughs> simply stating things like, it would be a ridiculous idea to send all the fish in the aquariums back into the wild, because they will have diseases that fish in the wild might not be tolerant to, so you could wipe out complete ecosystems, complete food chains could be gone by doing that. Um, made good arguments about conservation and things like the big public aquariums do a lot for the conservation and she was like well maybe if they didn't have to spend all that money looking after those fish they would be able to give even more money to conservation action for the oceans and you're like so you want them to shut down the public aquarium so they can give more money for conservation programs yet the only reason they have any money is because they're a public aquarium and they have loads of cool things to go and look at and gift shops and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> Just a beggar belief. Um, so the, all this stuff about the fish prisons and... Uh, she had no answer for any of these very reasonable points that this chap made. Um, so I thought I'm going to go and have a look and see what Peter's stance is on this. Um, so I thought we could share this. I've found um, Peter has a, an issues um, page. So I found it and I, I think there's something wrong with Peter and the big animal rights things. They do have the right idea maybe or they on the face of it have good intentions but poorly executed I think is where I find. So I, I think Peter probably terrible. Not overly keen on the things that they do. I know there's been loads of controversy about PETA, about they kill more animals than they save, so they have um, lots of shelters and things where they have a kill policy. Uh, I think one of the ones, don't quote me on this, but one of the shelters they opened killed every animal it took in. Um, they bring in millions every year, but it's like massive waiting on their budgetary stuff is on fundraising, advertising, all that kind of stuff, to then spend more money on fundraising and advertising and all that kind of stuff. It's a very dodgily weighted split of how they spend their money. They don't spend it all on shelters and all on causes. They spend a lot of it on themselves and publications and publicity and all that kind of thing. So it's just, it's got a bit of a sour taste in its mouth. Um, so I thought we could read it together and have a look at Peter's I had a quick scan of the first couple of paragraphs and went, oh, what? What's this utter? Um, so I thought, this, this might make a good read for all of us together. Um, let me just quickly, quickly scan and see if anyone's telling me, don't shut up, Graham. They're holding us hostage. You're not allowed to. <coughs> oh, Freshwater Ichthyology did a video on this. Well, I would urge you all to go and have a look at that video because she's a lot more knowledgeable than I am. So it probably will make more sense than anything I might say. I'm likely going to talk nonsense and upset everyone. Um. <laughs> Lily Loft, I did wonder why the big aquarium I visited the other day had tons of plastic plums. <laughs> See, this is, this is a comment after my own heart. Yeah, it's something, it's like a crackpot idea. Yeah, we're going to do a thing. What's that thing called? Rewilding. What's rewilding? We take all the pets in captivity and we release them all into the ocean. Well, why would that be a good idea? Because it's rewilding. That sounds ace though. But surely they'll just all die. But at least they're not being kept as pets. I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. This isn't making sense. It's just absolute nonsense. Um... The fact that rewilding being the ultimate goal for anything, then you should never domesticate anything, you never keep anything as pets. Why are we stopping with fish or cats or dogs or exotic animals or whatever it is? I mean, all those things. Why are we rewilding humans? I don't want to go and live in a tree. It's it's better. So I mean, there are arguments that fish might get a better life in some home aquariums than they would in the wild. They're not constantly under a threat from disease, drought, famine, predation, all these other things. They're not 
they're not people. They don't. They might have. Um, they are sentient, but that they're a, just a whole different class. I, I just don't get the whole anthropomorphizing things. Well, I wouldn't like it if I lived in the glass box. No one's asking you to live in a glass box. Shut up. But anyway, where did we get to? Um, so, little face. So this was the site I found uh, under. So this is Peter's Peter.org issues animal companion issues fish tanks fish in tanks no thanks fragile tropical fish were born and dwell in the majestic seas and forage among brilliantly curled co coloured coral reefs already I'm going Ugh. suffer miserably when they are forced to spend their lives in glass tanks says who how have they measured this have they done a survey. Have they gone and found Nemo and said, Nemo, did you prefer it when you were getting chased by those big, sharp toothed eels? The same is true of river fish. No, it's not. Robbed of their natural habitats and denied the ability to travel freely, they must swim around endlessly in the same few cubic inches of water. Now, there you're assuming, that I think the same person that wrote me my um, comment that my tank was way too small for discus is the same person writing this. They're assuming everyone is doing bad husbandry, and let's not be let's not beat around the bush. There are lots of terrible fish keepers out there, and um, there are lots of really really good fish keepers out there, and there's lots in between that are trying to be better and trying to do the right thing. Um, it is not the de facto position that if you keep fish in a tank, that is automatically terrible and far too small. Where fish really come from, the popularity of keeping tropical fish has created a virtually unregulated industry. Really? That catches and breeds as many fish as possible with little regard to the animals themselves. So are we catching them or are we breeding them? I thought we were robbing them from the the wild. Or are we breeding them now? Are they captive bred? While many species of coral are protected under the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, most fish who end up in aquariums are not. Because most saltwater fish cannot be bred in captivity, also not true. Up to 98% of those sold in pet stores come from the wild, mostly from the waters around Southeast Asia, Fiji and Hawaii. A lot of fish do come from there. Um, more than 30 million fish, along with millions of other types of marine life, such as anemones, shrimp and mollusks, are captured every year to support $200 million worldwide hobby. Why is hobby in inverted commas? Is it a hobby or isn't it a hobby? Is that a euphemism? Are we just a terrible writer? Some species, such as the Bangai cardinal fish, have become threatened because of fishing. Bollocks! They've just been written off as the <laughs> they're not threatened, they're not endangered, they're not even nearly threatened or endangered and haven't been for a long time. So it's just really bad research so far, as well as being sickly and terrible writing. Not that I'm biased, obviously. According to a 2008 report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, up to 90% of saltwater fish bought to the US for display are caught illegally using poison. Bad thing. I'm not going to say that everything here is wrong. If these things are happening, there are some dodgy techniques being used. We should stop those dodgy techniques. We should find better ways. We shouldn't just draw a line through everything and say we can't do these things. Collectors douse coral reefs with cyanide, which is ingested by the fish who live there. And as reported in Scientific American, the resulting asphyxiation stuns some fish and sends others into spasms, making them easy to grind by hand or net. Studies have shown that as many as 75% of fish... Studies have shown. There's always studies have shown. It's not here's the study that has shown this. Just a study somewhere. Someone did a study once. Studies have shown that as many as 75% of fish poisoned with cyanide die within hours of collection and another 30% die, die before they're ever shipped. Questionable math there, but okay. The cyanide also kills coral and millions of other fish, invertebrates, and microscopic animals. Marine biologists rank the poison as one of the biggest dangers in Southeast Asian waters. So we're listening to marine biologists now. Same marine biologists that work at public aquariums and things like that, maybe. Approximately 90% of freshwater fish are raised on farms. I thought, I thought we were stealing from the wild. Goldfish, for instance, are usually bred in giant tubs and facilities that produce as many 200 million fish per year. Goldfish, that well-known goldfish, all-encompassing goldfish. Are we talking about feeders? Are we talking about fancy goldfish? Are we talking about all of them? 
there aren't there are things wrong in our hobby that we should try and make better but this kind of blanket whitewashing of everything or blackwashing or whatever colour we're calling it it's, this isn't the way to go. These animals are sold to zoos, pet stores and bait shops and many are doomed to live in plastic bags or bowls. That would be bad. I would stop people keeping fish in plastic bags or bowls. Neither of which provides the space or oxygen that a goldfish need. Well, possibly true. The city of Monza, Italy, banned keeping goldfish in bowls because the containers do not meet the needs of the animal and because, as one sponsor of the law pointed out, Bowls give fish a distorted view of reality and they suffer because of this. Fish can speak, make tools and think. There's a new one. I did not know that to be fair. I was unaware that fish could speak. What can you say? Uh, let's just check in with some of these comments. Peter stands for people eating tasty animals. <laughs> Uh, go live in a glass box, Graham, says Callum. Excellent. <laughs> we need a rant alert. <laughs> Not quite a rant alert. It's a horn. Ripping them from the fins of their adoring parents, yes. So, as we go on, fish have cognitive abilities that equal sometimes surpass those of non-human primates. They can recognise individuals, use tools, and maintain complex social relationships. That is true. They can recognise individuals. They can use tools. Have you seen those fish that will grab a rock to crack another muscle or something like that? Um, they will maintain complex social relationships. We've seen fish schooling and shoaling. Sorry, I just spat all over the place there. Um, yeah, that doesn't mean that their con so their cognitive abilities are higher than a worm. Still quite the leap to being ripped away from their parents and feeling that kind of bond being broken. Biologists wrote in Fish and Fisheries that fish are steeped in social intelligence, pursuing Machiavellian strategies of manipulation, punishment and reconciliation, exhibiting stable cultural traditions and cooperating to inspect predators and catch food. No arguments for me. Fish communicate with one another a range of low-frequency sounds. Okay. From buzzies and clicks to yelps and sobs. Yelps and sobs. Really? These sounds, which are audible to humans only with the use of special instruments, yes, like a bollocks meter communicate emotional states such as alarm or delight or help with courtship. The pumps and filters necessary in many home aquariums can interfere with this communication. <sighs> at the least we're disrupting their communication, at worst we're driving them bonkers, says ichthyologist Philip Lobel. <laughs> I must say, I've spent a lot of time looking at my fish I haven't seen any of them looking like they're bonkers And I've spent a lot of time looking at my fish when they're in tanks that don't have filters and pumps and all those other things I mean, if they've got tools, why are they not writing signs or telling me if they can talk? I don't like that noise! That pump's really loud, we turn that off what can you do? Please don't support the tropical fish trade by purchasing fish. That's an, impo an important point there. If you enjoy watching fish, consider downloading one of the many colourful and realistic fish-themed computer screensavers available on the web. Don't support businesses or fairs that give away fish in contests or promotions. And get on board with that. I would agree with that one. <laughs> but I can get rid of so many up so much space all I have to do is download the screensaver. I'm so happy now. Siamese fighting fish who are often sold as decorations or party favours are fighting for their lives as the popularity grows. Really? Is it? Is it fighting for its life because of its popularity? Or is it unaware that its popularity has grown? Pet shops, discount superstores, florists and even online catalogues sell Siamese fighting fish, better splendons. Yeah well why don't we call them better splendons than rather than Siamese fighting fish if we're in tiny cups or flower vases to consumers who are often uneducated about proper better care. These tiny containers are not suitable for any fish. Quite right. Totally agree. They're not suitable for any fish. And we should be educating people when we sell them fish. And I think a lot of the complaints of people like me is that 
people try and educate badly. So maybe we should work on the way that we educate people who are wanting to buy fish rather than just ban it. I don't know. Biologists say there is no safe way to return captive fish to their natural environments. Ah, biologists again. Here we're listening to them or are we not listening to them? We're going to release them all into the wild a minute ago. No safe way to return captive fish to their natural environments, which are often located in a completely different regions of the world because of the difficulty in locating such a habitat and the possibility of introducing disease to the other fish there. Yeah, there's that again. So, the man who is presented as the face opposing rewilding fish and the organisation that was proposing the rewilding fish agree that you can't rewild fish because of the dangers of disease and the other myriad of problems. You can make it up. Researchers have found many species of non-native fish, including predatory species living off the coast of Florida, and they attribute these populations to careless aquarium owners. These fish pose a real threat to native species. Yes, that's... All of us here would say, yeah, don't release fish into the wild. It's a stupid idea. But why are you telling them to do it? <sighs> Researchers found many species... Uh, yep, done that bit. These fish pose a real threat to native species. Never flush a fish down the toilet in hope of freeing them, as seen in popular movies like Finding Nemo. Even if a fish survived the shock of being put into the swirling fresh water, he or she would die a painful death in the plumbing system or at the water treatment plant. Well, obviously. If you already have fish, you can make their lives easier by providing them with an environment as much like their natural habitat as possible. That's what we're doing! While captive fish can never live their natural lives, the following tips will help to ensure that they are happy as possible. This is going to be good. I can tell this is going to be good. I'm going to take a break to have a sip here. I think I might get irate shortly. Let's have a quick, a quick check of the comments. Uh... Quite. I have a wee top up. Get more ranty on my second drink. The more space fish have, the happier and healthier they will be. Their needs vary, so check with an expert or consult a good fish book to determine their requirements. No argument from me. That's why things like this exist. We've got lots of people on this stream tonight who are very knowledgeable. Got any questions? Consult us. I've, I've read the next sentence and I'm already upset with it. One general guideline. Oh, guideline. That sounds like a rule. One general guideline is that you should provide three gallons of water for every one inch of fish. There it is. Somebody's written it down. Peter have now committed it to paper. Three gallons of water for every one inch of fish. So they've taken the one inch to one gallon rule and they've made it better by saying it's three gallons. Um, but <laughs> regular viewers will know that this infuriates me. It's the most ridiculous rule guideline or anything I've ever heard. It just does not make sense. Your 10 inch Oscar can live in a 30 gallon tank quite happily, can it? Treat tap water properly before putting it into the aquarium, as most municipal water contains chlorine, which can kill fish. Good advice. Is there anyone that's not doing this? Are there people out there who aren't treating their water? The type of chemicals you should use depends on your area's water. Consult a local tropical fish supply store. Are we not to stop using them? Pretty sure earlier on we were told to not use any fish stores for anything. Uh, consult a local tropical fish supply store to determine the proper treatment. Tell you what, don't. You were already told earlier on not to use them. Ask us. Or go onto one of the billion websites or books that will tell you what to use. Seachem Safe, Seachem Prime, um, Tap Safe. The list goes on. There are hundreds of them. Different types of fish require different pH levels. Check the pH level daily. 
for the first month and weekly thereafter. Why? Why? What's that? What? Why? What happens on day four? Why are we checking it for the month? But what? What are we going to do? Check the P. Well, it's four today. Next day, that's uh, nine today. It was five today. And what kind of action are we meant to be taking with this? Well, that's just a waste of a bullet point. A filter to remove waste particles and knocks a filter. What the filter that disturbs their rhythms? The filter that's driving them insane. Surely they're not going to be recommending a filter with a pump in it, a horrible pump. A filter to remove waste particles and noxious chemicals from the water is essen essential. How can it be essential? What did they say up here? Uh, I'm pretty sure they said that we were driving them mental. And now I can't find it. We're driving them bonkers. That's what we're doing with our pumps and noises. But, oh, apparently it's essential. Okay. Live plants help with this task and provide oxygen shelter, hiding places, and the occasional snack. <coughs> they do. I mean, I would agree that they are essential, but it seems very all over the place so far, this article. A properly working air pump is necessary to provide oxygen. Bollocks. It's not necessary at all. There are many other ways to get oxygen in your tank. <sighs> For anyone who's new, air pumps do not pump oxygen into your tank. They create movement and surface agitation. Surface agitation that allows for the exchange of gases between the water and the air. Not You're not pumping oxygen into the tank. That's not how it works. So a wave maker or a filter return pointed at the surface, getting good surface agitation will do the same thing as an air pump. We don't need an air pump. I mean, they look nice if you like that kind of thing. Go for it. I'm not saying don't have an air pump. Not necessary. Fish need a constant temperature and you should check with a fish... Oh, we're back at the fish supply store again. We were told earlier not to go there. Now that's two things we need to go and check with them. You need a constant temperature. No, they don't. And you should check with a fish supply store for information that is specific to the type of fish that you are keeping. Yeah, always good to check and seek advice. Automatic aquarium heaters monitor the water temperature and turn the heater on and off as needed. Attaching a small thermometer to the tank will ensure help you ensure that the heater is functioning properly. Good, good advice, yes, if you want to use a heater. I would go one step further and use a heating controller, maybe. But yeah, fine. Yeah, but they don't need a constant temperature. They can quite happily. In the wild, you remember where it's best. Temperatures fluctuate throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout the year. The natural waste of fish the natural waste of fish emits ammonia. Natural waste of fish, okay, that's a clumsy sentence, but nothing else, emits ammonia, which can accumulate to toxic levels, so clean the tank regularly, but never empty the tank completely. Be sure to clean the glass well with a pad or brush to prevent algae growth. But algae would help deal with your ammonia problem. Okay, and I said clean the tank regularly. If you clean it too much, and you haven't said don't clean it with tank water. And you haven't said don't rinse everything out under your tap. Remember your bad chlorine tap? You might be fighting a losing battle there with this dodgy, half arsed ill-thought-out advice. Not biased, though. Create places for the fish to hide and explore. Ceramic objects, natural rocks, and plants work well. Make sure all objects are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected before they're put into the tank. Do not use metal objects as they will rust. Okay. Be aware of the environment outside the aquarium. Suddenly switching on, ooh, suddenly switching on a bright light in a dark room can startle fish. Very true, it can. And vibrations from a television or a stereo can alarm and stress them. Yes, and also don't have kids. They can run up and go. Uh, keep all harmful chemicals away from the aquarium. Mm -hmm. Cigarette smoke, paint fumes, and aerosol sprays can be toxic if they are absorbed into the water. Eh, you're unlikely to do much damp, smoking a few fags. But yes, painting, aerosols, all, all bad things. 
The aquarium should be in a spot where temperature and light are constant and controllable. <coughs> That's to make your life easier, not for the fish's life, because like we discussed earlier, temperatures rises and falls. Tropical fish supply stores. Again, with the tropical fish stores. I thought, no, it's like four or five times we've been told to use them. And only once not to use them. So, I don't know. Tropical fish supply stores may be able to advise you on the best amount of light for the fish you are keeping. Remember that direct sunlight and drafts from nearby doors and windows can change the water temperature, and fumes from a nearby kitchen or workshop can injure the fish. <laughs> Don't overfeed! Well, that's true. That's true of humans as well. We ban humans. Don't get a belly like this for not overfeeding. Uneaten food and waste material are broken down into ammonia and nitrites, which are toxic. All right, well, you've mentioned two things of the aquarium cycle there. What about the third one? Remember that filter you told us to get? That's doing a job there. It's turning those ammonia and nitrites into nitrates. One expert recommends providing only as much food as a fish can eat in 30 seconds. Twenty-two. So that must be somebody cited that. I'm going to guess that's something that's been horribly taken out of context because that's nonsense. I mean, a good guidance or a good rule of thumb, um, not a rule, is it's usually five minutes or so. But my discus tank, for instance, I'll, I'll quite happily let them graze for an hour. My fish are grazers, and that works well for us. Thirty seconds is a bit like shh. <laughs> You're never going to feed the bloody things. The fish will be like, oh, delicious. Let me just go and wash my fins, because I am a human after all. Just get ready for dinner. Oh, come on, guys, dinner's here. Guy, oh, he's gone. Taking it out. Ah, oh, what the hell? Who's telling them 30 seconds? I've not even got time. Oh. I have to find that. 22. Nathan Hill. Oh, I know that name. Don't make these fish-keeping mistakes. So, ah. Oh. I would need to look at the article, but I'm going to assume that's uh, something for complete beginners not to chuck in 10 tons of food at once. 30 seconds. I mean, that just seems a bit... If a fish seems sick or lethargic, take him or her to a vet. Him or her? What about all the other genders? Fish can be medicated, anaesthetized, given shots and operated on just like other animals. Take along a separate sample of the tank water. <laughs> that is true. I have gone to the vets with my fish. I, and I even asked, Do you need me to bring the fish in? He said, What? Are you an idiot? Of course not. Um, there are fish vets out there, and if you can find one, that's really useful. Get some of the good drugs if you get a fish vet. Um, but normal vets, normal high street vets, cat and dog vets that are a bit like fish, I don't know. Um, they've got no idea. Um, so don't just rock up to your local Abbey vets with fish in a bag going, oh, this looks a bit ill. It's going to be really ill if you've been carrying around that poly bag. Most fish enjoy companionship. If you have a single fish, check with friends and neighbours to find another loner to adopt. But don't support the fish trade by going to a dealer. What? Most fish enjoy companionship. Some fish enjoy companionship. If you have a single fish, check with friends and neighbours to find another loner to adopt. Don't do that. No. Don't support the fish trade by going to a dealer. Do support the fish trade by going to your local fish shop. Don't go taking in... <laughs> it's like, hello, Dave. Uh, it's me from next door. You know that fish you've got? Yeah, I really like that fish. No, you have to give it to me. I'm adopting. It completely depends on the type of fish we're talking about here. What a, what a nut. Supply stores and catalogues have clear plastic dividers available that can be used to create a safe section in a large tank for a better fish who is living in a community aquarium. Why are we community? Make sure the divider fits securely in the tank and provides necessary access to the surface. Oh, Alright. Seems like a strange thing to put. What about make sure the divider isn't see-through? What about 
don't put lots of better fish in the same aquarium. Ah, that's it. <coughs> Pardon me. What a lot of bollocks. I, I do have to apologise for my language, but what a lot of nonsense. So, that's it. That was the little thread that I went on this afternoon. All from let's rewild all the fish to finding Peter's evidence, argument, article. Really poorly written, ill thought out, ill researched. Bunch of bollocks. I can't think of any other way to put it. <laughs> yes, this was my feeling as well. The whole report reverses to the point that aquariums are perfectly acceptable. Exactly. <sighs> Demolishing a sticky tab and th <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was it 30 minutes? Uh, maybe I've been too harsh. I thought it said 30 seconds. Uh, let me find it. Oh, 30 seconds. Mind you, that's going to be good for the fish food business. So, everyone, if you're interested, I sell these wonderful sticky tabs. Um, they're great. You can stick them onto the side of your glass or the front of the tank, the glass. The fish can come up and they can nibble away at these. You can take some pictures. It's really good for getting the fish in a nice frame. Um, but after 30 seconds, whip it out, throw it in the bin, get a new one. <laughs> You'll be buying loads. Yeah, we can't forget the non-binary fish. <laughs> oh, I, I just think we should all definitely do this. I'll go around to your neighbours say, Hello, have you got any fish? I need to pair up mine. Ah. <laughs> I, I thought this as well. So Scottish Ogre saying here, well, I'm <laughs> looking at the new terminology, instead of going to my local fish store, I'm going to my local fish dealer. I just means you should be doing it like this, shouldn't you? Hey, all right, mate, got any fish? You got a dime bag for fish? Uh, prematurely ending timorous animals. We cure in timorous beastie. I wonder if Nathan knows that he's being quoted in a PETA article saying that um, we should get rid of fish. I've read some of his stuff before and that wasn't what I was getting from it. But yes. So anyway, anyway, anyway. Right, let's get down to the bottom. We'll do a wee giveaway, shall we? Uh, let's do a wee plug first. For all your fishing needs, aquariumadventures.co.uk, obviously. Um, 